Today we're going to unbox the Estes Vapor Rocket Kit. There are many unboxing videos for model rockets, but wouldn't you like a real rocket scientist's opinion of the materials and parts in the kit? Today you'll actually find out the inside information so that you know what to look for when you get a rocket kit. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan, and yes, I am a rocket scientist. Today we're going to unbox the Estes Vapor rocket and we're going to take a look at it from an engineer's perspective. Um, so I'm going to open it up. I'm just going to take a razor blade and split the plastic. That way I can reuse the plastic bag if I need to put the parts back in. Uh, first thing we notice is the four color color insert and this is really nice. It shows you the, the rocket and it tells us on this that there are two different color schemes and two different decal packages included. So we have this purple one and then the yellow one. And this rocket has a length of 45 inches. So that's, you know, from my table to about right there, it's 45 inches tall. That's a tall rocket and it's based on a BT-60, which I can tell. Um, and it uses an 18 inch parachute. So that's cool. And this will probably use um, 24 millimeter diameter motors. I'm looking over here, D12-5. Uh, so that's 24 millimeter diameter. Um, so you can fly it on, yeah, there's a C engine that's 24 millimeters, a D, an E, and an F. So you can go really high with this rocket. So the first thing we notice is the engine mount tubes <laughs> slid right outside. Another tube slid out. Let me go get this. <laughs> yeah, there's parts inside of parts in here. Okay, so we have uh, two paper tubes and these are craft paper. They're the standard BT-60 size. Very nice, um, nice and slick. Should be easy to paint. Um, these, this one is the engine mount tube, and this one here is a simulated rocket engine because you're going to glue in an engine block inside of here, and this will help you position it in the right spot. Um, these are also craft paper. Don't throw this away after you're done. You won't need it for flight, um, but these are nice to have in your building supplies. Uh, also in here we have a tube coupler and this is going to allow us to glue these two tubes together. Uh, it's also craft paper. Here is a plastic blow molded nose cone and I always like to check the fit. Um, it, it's a little loose but you know you basically you'll just wrap some masking tape around there. You know the fit that I like is um, you slide it on and it should stay if you turn it upside down. This one doesn't stay. Um, but then if you just wiggle it, it should work its way out. That's the good fit that you want to achieve. And you'll just wrap some masking and tape around there and that would be fine. Um, here on the back we have a loop and you'll attach your shock cord and your parachute to that loop. So you have to pop that little plastic piece out, which I just did. Um, so that's what that will look like. All right, so let's look in here at the smaller parts. You got another bag inside of there. Let's open that. All right, so let's open this first. So here is the fins and these are balsa wood and this is an eighth inch thick. I can tell that by looking at it and they're laser cut. So everything is very precise and they look like they're going to pop out real easy. Everybody likes that when that happens. It makes construction go faster. Uh, this right here is the decals and does it have both sides? Okay, so they put, they put both of them on one sheet. Um, so you got these light blue ones that go with the purple scheme and then the yellow and white ones that go with the yellow and black color scheme. So they're all on one sheet. Um, I was expecting two different sheets, but that's fine. Uh, this here is a protective paper that they ship it with 
just to protect the, those decals from getting scratched up because they are delicate until you put them on. There are water slide decals, so what you'll do is you'll cut them out with the scissors and then soak them in water and then they slide off the paper onto the, onto the rocket. Make sure you paint your rocket first before you slide the decals on. Uh, this right here is the instruction sheet. And yes, they are very well illustrated. I like seeing that. Uh, very basic. This is probably a skill level three. Um, Estes calls it advanced. But they start out with beginner, then intermediate, then advanced, then expert, and then master. So on a scale of one to five, this is like three on difficulty of building. And it's not. It's just kind of like your advanced average rocket. Uh, so those are instructions. And then looking in here, let's open this up and see what's inside. Okay. So lots of good stuff in here. Uh, first of all, we have this is an engine retainer system. This is a screw-on engine retainer. Um, normally in the past, Estes used an engine hook. Um, and now with composite rocket motors that have the thrust ring that's built on the back, most people like to switch over to a screw-on engine retainer. And what's going to happen is this is going to get glued on to that, but this screws on. So you'll drop your rocket motor in and then just screw it on, and it prevents the rocket engine from coming out the back. Um, and with composite motors, since the composite motors have the thrust ring built on the, on the back end of the motor, it gets locked right up against this, and then when you screw it on, it captures it, so it can't go forward or back. Uh, with black powder motors, um, Estes likes you to put in a thrust ring like this uh, to prevent the engine from sliding all the way through, but there's an alternate way. Let's see if Estes um, tells you the alternate way here. No, they don't. On some other kits, they do. Uh, but this one doesn't. But you can take, here's the rocket engine here in the back. You can actually take masking tape and build up a, you know, a thick ring on the back end of the rocket motor. And then you trim off the excess tape because you only need the, the width of it about one quarter of an inch. Um, and that will hold the, the rocket in also. And then you don't need this thrust ring. And if you can leave the thrust ring out, then you can use some really long rocket engines. Um, like I said, this is a 42 inch long rocket, so it's it's pretty long. So you can, you know, you're going to want to fly it with some motors that has some kick to it because they go really high or really fast. It's lots of fun. Uh, also in here, we have our elastic shock cord as this uses rubber. Um, so the the nice thing is you get, you know, it stretches long. So when the ejection charge goes off, it slows down. And this is really good at present, preventing zippers on your tube, which is, um, you know, if you get, if this was Kevlar, it could rip the side of the tube, but because it's rubber, it's going to stretch. The downside of it is rubber gets brittle over time. So if your rocket is like a year old or older, make sure you pull on it and test it to make sure that that rubber, rubber hasn't degraded where it's going to snap. Um, and, if it's, and if it looks like it's degraded, you know, then it two parts, you know, if it snaps, the rocket's gonna come down in two parts, and then you're gonna have a longer walk to retrieve the rocket. So always inspect that and replace it as necessary. Uh, this orange ring is a spacer tube, so if you're using D engines, and you put in that thrust ring, you would need to, um, they're gonna tell you to put the thrust ring in pretty deep inside the, inside the engine tube. It's probably gonna go in like that deep, somewhere like about that deep into there. Um, but then if you use a D engine, which is shorter, this is the E engine size. If you use a short D engine, you're gonna need a spacer. And that's what that does is it, it drops in there first so that, you know, a shorter rocket motor will still hang out the correct amount. Um, like I said, um, this is kind of optional. You know, a lot of modelers don't put in that thrust ring anymore. You don't have to, but the instructions tell you to do it. Uh, this here is the 
um, engine mount centering rings. Um, they'll go onto this tube right here. I'm not sure, sure why they give you three of them. Um, but um, if, if you only need two, then the third one's a spare. Uh, this is the launch log. I, I should check. I, you know, I shouldn't tell you if they use all three. Yes, they. This does show using all three rings. So go ahead and put them all on. Um, it doesn't hurt to have that extra ring in there. This is a launch log, and this is three sixteenths inch, inches in diameter. So that's thicker than what you'll get on an Estes. Porta pad, you know, their small launch pad that they use for starter sets. So this is a thicker diameter rod. So you're going to need the maxi rod is what they call it. We sell it here at Apogee Components. You can also get thicker rod at like a big box hardware store. They sell steel rods and steel works really good because it's stiffer. Um, and this is a longer rocket. So you'll probably, and they, get the longer launch rod if they have it. Um, you know, they, they typically sell them four feet long at those hardware stores. Um, so get it if you can. Otherwise, a three foot will work. And then finally, we have the 18 inch pa plastic parachute. And it's a nice blue and white. And you can see the sh shroud lines are already pre-attached, which is really nice. Um, so that will save you time and uh, you'll probably want to see what this looks like. Kind of a checkerboard pattern. Yeah, that's nice. It makes it easy to recover. And then finally, inside of here, we have the full one year warranty. Um, and it also lists the launch site dimensions uh, for you know, if you're new to rocketry, how much space you're going to need to fly your rockets. So if you're flying it on a D engine, they recommend the minimum launch site dimension is 500 feet square. So 500 feet on each side. Um, if you're going to go with an E motor, double that. So that's a thousand feet on a side. And this is the same with an F motor. Um, you know, the bigger the field, the better your chances of getting your rocket back. And I would recommend using the um, launch visualizer to see the flight of the rocket. And you can see that at rocksim.com. Um, so if you have the rocksim file, which you'll be able to download at the Apogee website, apogeerockets.com. And then, so you'll get the rocksim file and then upload it to the internet on the rocksim.com website. And that will allow you to see your rocket flying in 3D on the earth on your particular launch site. So you'll be able to figure out where your rocket is gonna land based on what engine you use. And that's the purpose of that. So it's a great tool. There's a free version available that you can see your rocket taking off. So this is the Estes Vapor Rocket Kit. You'll find it here at Apogee Rockets. Our web address is www.apogeerockets.com.